uh, just like to uh, welcome you and uh, invite you to my YouTube site, which I have over uh, about 375 to 400 videos. And you can go to Stephen, three uh, words, Stephen C-O-I-A Sterling, Stephen C-O-I-A Sterling. There you will find so many scriptures, uh, so many teachings, and so many informational kingdom tools to help you rule and to help you ascend and help you mend and help you get up and move up and go up to the highest possible gradients in God, in the kingdom. And uh, I want to invite you to go there and, and make those available to you. And so the Lord has had me on a track, on a track. He has had me on a blitz. He has had me on a, um, you know, divine visitation. You know, of course, we have services at Dallas Revival Center. 375 I-30 East and off the Bobtown Road, road exit uh, there in Garland, Texas at the uh, La Quinta Inn. And um, right there is just a beautiful session that we have at 330 on Sunday and um, 730 on Monday nights. Uh, it's the uh, La Quinta Inn by Wyndham. And so uh, you go out to the Bobtown Road uh, off of I-30, make a, uh, get out the exit there, come back on the service road, there it is. And so we have a large, very large conference room. You're welcome to come in. And we've been in really in revival for years. And uh, not too many people know, uh, compared to the number of people that we have in this area, uh, about what we do. But uh Massively and wonderfully, God always informs and announces it to people who really need help, need assistance, need care, need a miracle. And uh, that's what I'm going to talk about today, the miraculous. <clears throat> and I want this to be a litmus kind of a, for you to discover whether or not you're really in the flux or in the flow and in the know or not regarding the miraculous and those types of things that God brings in tremendous and stupendous ways. Uh, you want to start out Matthew 17, 20. He said to them, because of your little faith. For truly I say unto you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing will be impossible for you. Of course, this whole um, segment of scriptures has to do, uh, if you put it in context, as he picks it up in the 14th verse, it says, when they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him, and he said in verse 15, Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. And, and, and here's why uh, he came to Jesus. said, I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. But they could not heal him. And so many of us fall into this category um, in the needs and in um, sharing and caring and, and reaching out to people. Uh, we can go so far with them. But when it comes to healing and really getting people their miracle, how many people find themselves lifeless and listless and uh, without an answer, a real-time God answer? I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. And then Jesus turns and he says, you unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at that moment. And what the disciples could could not do, failed to do, Jesus in one moment um, rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. And he, the Bible says he was healed at that moment moment. Wow, isn't that amazing? And um, 
and he explained to them why they couldn't do it. He says, because, in, in, and here's our text again, Matthew 17, 20, because of your little faith. And, of course, Jesus talked about unbelief, and he talked about perversion. So uh, people's aversion to perversion uh, coupled with doubt and unbelief uh, will always cause them to fail in the sight of demons, which uh, cause indemnity, cause sickness, pain, and suffering. Uh, it's a chronic pain and suffering. And uh, people don't realize that uh, many times their ailments uh, are their signs and symptoms because demons are present in their flesh and in their soul. But really, that's for another day. But let me just say, this is a reflective mirror. It comes back to many of us when Jesus speaks and rebukes and says, because of your little faith, And he says here, uh, emphatically, he says, if you had but a little faith, like a grain of mustard seed, and of course, put a mustard seed in your hand and it almost disappears. It's so small. Uh, So he's talking about the God kind of faith, obviously. And God tells us to have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. If you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you would say to this mountain, you know, move from here to there, and it would move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So he's kind of referencing these demon powers like mountains and uh, that they can be exercised, and you can tell them to move, to get out, to get behind you, and to... um, Tell them where to go instead of them telling you what to do and shaking you down and telling you where to go. You know, you can turn the tables on these infernals and you can find marvelous things will take place when you have just a mustard seed of faith move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. And again, it's just a natural flow of a stream of um, thoughts that uh, were, were unfolded in the gospel, uh, in the scripture, as Matthew recounts these things. You know, that we again, we left off in verse 18, and it says, Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked him, see, Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked Why could not we drive it out? Why could not we drive it out? He he replied, because you have so little faith. And then he gets into talking about mountain moving faith and these monumental mountainous, uh, uh, well-established, well-entrenched demons and spells and enchantments and and uh, demonic encampments that have so um, controlled the human frame mm, seem like they are immovable and impossible to rid. Uh, Jesus begins to explain to them how that in an instant of time, you know, at that moment, it says, you will say to it, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you. You know, that goes back to verse 18. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at that moment. And he was healed at that moment. Immediate deliverance. Immediate deliverance from the satanic bondage. Uh, and the satanic stronghold, strongman, uh, was repulsed and ejected from that young man's life because Jesus had mercy on the man's son. And seizures are no small thing, believe me, in the natural to deal with. What is your situation? 
what is your complex? What 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 thing is challenging you? What thing is um, hindering you, stopping you, dropping you, cropping you? Uh, Jesus has the answer. Thank you, Jesus. And this this answer is always there. But we must walk by faith and not by sight. John 4, 48, so Jesus said to them, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. People are always looking and observing whether or not after they pray for someone, whether the, whether or not the thing is done, whether or not the whether or not the situation has been uh, rectified, whether or not there has been actually a healing performance. And when people are looking at, at the signs and symptoms to try to detect whether or not uh, the mountain has been moved, they're, they're, they should see through the eye of faith, as Jesus does and did, that we have complete control over the demonic world and we have complete control over all the signs and symptoms and scenarios that the demons bring. I mean, Jesus obviously tells us uh, about our authority. You know, if you look at Luke ten nineteen, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all, A-double-L, the power of the enemy. And nothing will by any means hurt you. Nothing will by any means uh, hurt you. There it is. I mean, it's, it's in black and white. It's, it's totally obvious that we have all power in Christ. I mean, all this took place and what an indictment it really was. You know, as we look at verse 17 here in the Matthew account, he says, you unbelieving and perverse generation. Jesus replied in, in, with great impatience, uh, how long shall I stay with you? Or how long is it going to take while I'm with you, working with you every day, and you're watching me as I do what I do? How long? Shall I put up with you? How long shall I put up with you? Now, uh, Jesus can be a little bit terse and adverse and a a little bit upset because, you know, it was just in the account in Matthew in the first verse where, you know, um, Jesus is transfigured in front of uh, Peter, James, and John. You know, and he brought them up to a high mountain by themselves, uh, and he was transfigured before them, his face shone like the sun, and, and his clothes became as white as light. Uh, and just then uh, appeared uh, before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. What a spectacle, what a sight. You know, and so you now the, the revelation, the revealing of, of the light of the world, of the of the connected piece uh, from the law and the prophets standing right in front of them. Uh, And still, with a lack of faith to deal with the issues at hand, I don't care what kind of uh, revelation you had in the past, you know, that's the past. And life moves on, and you got to stay with Jesus and stay with his protocol, stay with his proficiency, stay with uh, focus, and stay with intent. You know, a lot of people have a lot of testimonies from the past, but how about now? And so he, he, he qualifies it in Matthew seventeen twenty. Uh, all you need is a little bit of faith, just a grain of a mustard seed type faith, and the mountains will move. The demons will move. The strongholds will move. The occult will move. The signs and symptoms that are uh, a product of these spirits will move. I mean, for real. I mean, in the Great Commission. 
you know, Jesus spoke very clearly in Mark 16, 17, and these signs will accompany those who believe. Believe is an action word for faith. Faith in action is, is what belief is. These signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. In my name, they will cast out demons. Demons. There it is. I mean, so in his authority, in his place, as his representative. And, of course, I've said it before, and it's worth repeating. You know, Jesus says in John six sixty three. Uh, the flesh profiteth nothing, but my words are spirit, and my words are life. My words are spirit, and my words are life. So falling along with his word, and you've got to know that um, you qualify to flow and go in his and with his word because of his grace. You know, God's riches at Christ's expense. In Acts 14, 3, so they remained for a long time speaking boldly for the Lord, who bore witness to the word, there it is, word of his grace, the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. The word of his grace bore witness to it. And then, um, they spoke boldly and with authority. And when you know that you have cutting edge power, when you know you can cut through the ice, when you know that you have a powerful uh, expression of God's oracles that cut through brass and iron and any other hard metals, uh, any other strongholds of the mind that refute an argument with whether God is supreme or not, when you work in his powerful word of his grace, you speak boldly and with authority, and signs and wonders follow you, just like the Great Commission says. And again, the word of his grace is spoken to us in Acts 20, 32. And he says, and now in the King James, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word, there it is, of his grace which is able to build you up, see, and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. See, there it is. Uh, so the, the word of his grace not only can expulse and cast out and refute and, and, and reject and eject demons and their strongholds and all their nemesis and all their evil uh, contorted assignments, but also it can build you up, up above all that and give you an inheritance you know, give you and put you in view and, 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 and help you to know what to do, how to walk in all of the assets that heaven has at its immediate disposal in your life. And not only do you need to know that the grace is available to you, but it's available to anybody that you pray for. Uh, the grace of God can come upon them because you're carrying it yourself. Acts 14.3, so Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord who affirmed the message of his grace, there it is again, by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. There it is. So signs and wonders follow speaking boldly. Uh, it will transfer the grace to the hearer, and the hearer can then move in that grace and, and find their miracle, find their deliverance, find their freedom, find their victory. Thank you, Lord. See, moving that satanic opposition, especially if, if you need financial uh, deliverance, <clears throat> um, God has a method by which he can do this with you and assist you and help you and aid you to get there. I mean, God was speaking to um, the Apostle Paul after he gave him an unbelievable revelation of who he was uh, by shining a light on him and knocking him off his donkey there on the way to Damascus. And... Um, 
he speaks to him and says, But get up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen from me and what I will show you. And I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I will rescue you from your own people and the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to the light, from the power of Satan to God, that you may receive uh, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those sanctified by faith in me, those sanctified by faith in me. So um, sanctification is also accomplished by trusting and having faith in God. Um, but there it is again, uh, the opening of the eyes, the turning from the darkness, and uh, removing the power of Satan. See, this, this is all patterned here. Uh, which the word helps accomplish grace that is attached to the word gives the leverage and the uh, not only working with the individual that God is calling and sending, but also the people that are there to hear and to receive. So there's a tremendous uh, grace exchange uh, and like faith um, that is a gift given by God. Uh, In measure, we also have as we grow up in it, of course, we can get an unlimited measure, but in Ephesians 4, 7, the Apostle Paul says, to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. See, um, we could walk in it and really grow in it and increase in it and just, uh, because, you know, there's an unlimited amount of faith, there's great faith, great faith, you know what I mean? And there's also uh, an unlimited amount of grace, and there's uh, the riches of his grace, uh, all grace that abounds. And, and I don't want to get into all the details now, but um, these are things that we know are there. And the Apostle Paul spoke about them. He, you know, the Apostle Paul mentions <clears throat> uh, grace. Uh, that actually <clears throat> it adhes to him as he began to work in the ministry and the power gifts in Ephesians 3, 7. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace. There it is, given to me through the working of his power, through the working of his power. So grace uh, preceding the power or working along with the power. So you got to know that um, when you work and operate, and even when you pray, and even when you stand up for your healing and stand up for your financial breakout, break loose, that the gift of grace is working uh, powerfully and productively in your life. My, 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 I feel that for people right now. And, of course, speaking how that, God, that power gift and uh, grace work hand in hand, uh, you don't really need to look too much farther in the scriptures in the in the beginning of the book of Acts. Well, toward the middle, I guess, Acts 19.11, and God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. So, you know, things happen. Immediately, you don't have to waste a lot of time or you don't have to wait a long time. Things can happen fast once you know you're right standing in God and once you have your um, calling assured and you you, you have the uh, boldness of uh, faith to, to stand on and to step into uh, the power effects of his word, you know. Acts 9.34, and Peter said to him, and Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed, and immediately he rose. See, immediately he rose. And Aeneas, Aeneas, A N A E N E A S, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise, make your bed, and immediately, immediately he rose. So there it is. You know, because your expression of the word. Which is spirit and life, John six sixty three, and it's expression of the word that builds you up and, and helps you to receive that word uh, that emboldens you and and, and gives you uh, gives you the faith to walk in the supernatural 
comes from Almighty God. That, that's the reference point. You know, Jeremiah 32, 27, behold, he says, I am the Lord, uh, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? And, you know, Job speaks about it. Job 5, 9, who does great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number, who does great things and unsearchable, marvelous things uh, without number. And then spoken about again in Job 9, 10, it says, who does great things beyond searching out, marvelous things beyond number. So innumerable things, things that can't even be fathomed, things that can't even be searched out. It's impossible to even go there. Those are the types of things that God says um, that he does and he can do for you and I. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. And, you know, when you flow with God, John 10, 10, you know, the thief cometh but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Then Jesus says, but I, I am, but I am. I Anything after I am is, you know, God can do anything, anytime, anywhere with anyone. I mean, the I am, see, at that moment become anything and do anything. Um, but I am come that you might have life and have it to the full till it overflows, till it's super abundant. And that's the kind of thing, uh, that's the kind of scenario we're talking about here, the beginning of Jesus' ministry, John 2, 11. But this, this, the first sign, excuse me, this, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory. And his disciples believed in him. And his disciples believed in him. See, he took a mundane situation. He took a uh, failing situation. He took a and talking about this is just a social situation. This is just among friends and relatives. This is just something to um, change the environment, the atmosphere, which seemed to be um, running out of festival, running out of fun, running out of running out of happiness and joy here at this wedding feast. Uh, and this is the first of the signs Jesus did at Cain and Galilee and manifested his glory. See, God wants the glory in everything and all things in every situation. Um, he came and he turned water into wine. You know, he, he turned a uh, limited, uh, mundane, look about to end, about to ebb uh, celebration, turns it around and, and, and let, it lets his glory move in and just uh, rescue the day and in unparable ways just just make it a holiday beyond holidays. Uh a significance beyond significance. And we don't know everything in the Bible. Uh, the Bible doesn't speak of everything that Jesus uh, said and did. I mean, come on. Uh, so many people limit it to just so many miracles. They count the miracles and say, this is all that happened. And that's crazy for people to do that, even in the Old Testament with Elijah and Elijah and all these other people. But, you know, uh, their lives were testimonies, I'm sure, every day. And, and, you know, when they drew a breath, I mean, it was a miracle, the, the things that happened. You know, John 20, verse 30, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these things were written in the book, John 20, 31. These things are written so that you may believe <clears throat> that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He's the anointed one. He's the supernatural that can uh, change the natural into heavenly actions and heavenly uh, uh, events. Heavenly actions and heavenly events. That's what the Christ is and Christ does. He's the enabler. He's the one that... Uh, can change the water into wine, okay? Uh, uh, these are written so that you may believe that Jesus uh, is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. There it is again, life in his name, life in his name, lifestyle in his name, the way we live, the way we move, the way we have our being, how things flow, how things cook, and how things book in our lives, and how, I mean, the, platit the platitude of things can just dance, sing, and I mean, animate in unbelievable ways. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I mean it.
you know, because we know what uh, uh, Luke said. You know, Luke, the doctor, spoke about Jesus in, in, in Luke one thirty seven. For nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing will be impossible with God. Uh, and Jesus says this himself in Luke eighteen twenty seven. He said, uh, spoke of Jesus. Uh, he said, what is impossible with men is possible with God. What is impossible with men is impossible with God. You're at the ending place of yourself. You're the ending place of your situation. It looks like things are going to come. It looks like there's never going to be an answer. It looks like there's, a, there's never a scenario that can turn the tide and change the whole protocol and, 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 and kick this up to a heavenly lodge. Listen, what is impossible with men is possible with God. God, with God, all things are possible. And there it is. You know, Jesus even spoke in Mark 9, 23. If you can, all things are possible for the one. All things are possible for the one who believes. <clears throat> can he not fix your finance? Can he not fix your resources? Can he not fix your ordained ministry? Can he not fix that calling in your life? Of course he can. Of course he can. You know, and of course people haven't turned around, you know, making fun of people that um, work and operate the gifts of deliverance and uh, believe in demon possession. Let's just follow this out in Matthew 9, 32. And they were leaving a demon-possessed man who was mute, was brought to Jesus. So what was the cause of his of his uh, un um, uh, inability to speak? It was because there was a demon in, in his tongue, you know, demon in him. And when the demon had uh, been driven out, I like this, when the demon had been driven out, the man began to speak. And the crowds were amazed and said, nothing like this has been ever seen in Israel. Verse 34, now the Pharisees said, it is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. It is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. See, uh, you know, and of course Jesus said, a kingdom divided itself cannot stand. And see, the devil's infuriated because he's exposed. See, and, and, the, and the mute are talking. You know, the devil's going to be, infuriated also when you're delivered i mean in a major way in the springtime season in april when surprises and bonuses and all kinds of god interventions and miracle signs and wonders are sweeping through your town and village hallelujah and the kingdom of god is being expressed the way it is called to be expressed you know you know i like what it says in luke 10 35 jesus went throughout all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom healing every every disease and sickness there it is there it is i mean so how much more do you need to know and then Jesus goes on to talk about the harvest is plentiful, but the workers of few asked the Lord of harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. The Lord of harvest is at work. Your harvest is coming in. If you're a seed sower, if you plant uh, uh, first fruits and do um, uh, work with kingdom tools and kingdom resources, I'm telling you right now, the harvest will be plentiful on your and in and through your behalf and, and for, you know, the glory of God. It will manifest well this is pastor steve sterling say it's been fun it's been real uh we just thank god for you and we believe that god is uh really really opening up the doors the portals the gates and the windows for you in the month of april showers bringing all kinds of god manifestations to you immediately suddenly now quicker than a speeding bullet quicker than the speed of light quicker than a blink of an eye here it comes here it comes